Welcome to this iWorld live event with the most lively person here. <laughs> this is this is my good friend, uh, honestly, my good friend, Deepinder Dhaliwal. Uh, Deep, we're going to be talking about something that uh, used to be so controversial. Can I tell you something? I I was uh, talking at some conference about something else. I think I was talking about uh, I think I was talking about this about doing media, and I gave the example of primary decimase stripping. And there was a, a near on riot. I mean, people say, how can you, how can you publicize this as such a terrible thing? It's not controversial anymore. So let, let me uh, have you give me this sort of lay of the land here, and then I'll have some specific questions. Absolutely. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. The pleasure's me. all mine. Okay. So decimate stripping only is a really exciting technology, technique that we do for our patients with central Fuchs dystrophy. And the concept is corneal rejuvenation, letting the patient heal themselves. And it's wonderful because we can take the, the barrier to the endothelial cell migration and possibly even um, cell proliferation by removing the central four millimeters of decime membrane with the dysfunctional endothelium and then allowing the cornea to heal. And now we have so many wonderful studies that help us understand how to optimize the surgery and which patients to do the surgery on. We've, we've now learned, uh, Marion Max, I just published a great prospective study and it's coming out this month uh, in the Cornea Journal showing that taking topical repositol uh, QID for two months really improve the outcome in, in the patients. Now, this is a rokinase uh, mm -hmm. in yes. inhibitor uh, that is otherwise uh, not available in the, in the, well, it's not available in the, in the U.S. market. I think it's, in, it's available in the, the Japanese market. Uh, and um, the, the questions, I mean, we, we only talk about this class of medication in the context of management of glaucoma, what's it doing here? That's a really good question. Oh, thanks. It's, it's basically allowing, we think it's helping to wake up the stem cell niche for perhaps, because what Marion found is that the peripheral endothelial cell density in the patients that took the topical rho kinase inhibitor did not decrease. However, in patients that had DSO without topical repositol, their peripheral cell count decreased, which makes you think that in those patients, it's just simply a migration of endothelium, not a proliferation. So it's exciting. It's doing something inside to kind of wake up the, the perhaps wake up the stem cells and actually create some proliferation. Now, let, let, me, let me ask you something. Before the, um, before the introduction of this class of medication in this context, primary decimase uh, stripping, the central four millimeters, uh, looked very promising and the outcomes were uh, very good, okay? So why should I care if the, uh, the, the peripheral endothelial cell count goes down? And what I mean by, by that, as I know, keep in mind, I'm a you know cornea trained guy, and and the, the, the you know these fighting words that I'm that I'm mentioning here. What I want to know is, are the visual outcomes better? Is the resolution of edema faster? I mean, are there real clinical metrics, or is it who am I treating here? Am I treating the patient, or am I treating me by saying, okay, well the cell counts are high? The time to 2040 vision is faster. And that's the important thing. I think the, the faster we can get these patients functional again, the better. So when we published our study of DSO, or decimate stripping only, versus DMEC, we found that both groups were able to achieve final vision of 2040 or better. However, that, there was no statistical significantly difference in those two groups. However, the time to achieve that vision was much faster uh, in the DMEC group. So it was about 2.2 weeks in the DMEC group, but the decimate stripping only group was 7.1 weeks on average. So when you're 
a patient with Fuchs dystrophy and you've just had surgery and you have massive corneal edema, every day that you can see better is a day that you are more functional and we want to shorten that healing time as much as we can. So I think it, it is, we're treating the patient for sure with this topical therapy. And so I, I think that when we pick the right patients, this procedure is really exciting when we think about kind of regeneration in general. So let, 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 let me ask this question as someone who practices in this country. Um, there is a, and you may not know, the, the, the answer to this question may not be known, okay? There is a rokinase inhibitor medication that, that is FDA approved in the U.S. Is there any evidence that I can get the same sort of outcomes or improved outcomes over not using any rokinase inhibitor in this context with that medication? I am not aware of any studies. No, nor am I. Yeah. Right, exactly. So anecdotally, you know, uh, some people have used it. I'm not quite sure of the, the, if the effect is equal to Repositol. So um, where does this fit into a clinical practice now? So who, for whom are you recommending this therapy? I'm re recommending this therapy in patients that have Fuchs dystrophy with only central pathology, with Goutte centrally, with a relatively clear periphery, and we now know that the cell count in the periphery should be greater than 1,000 millimeter squared, okay? So that's really important, so we, we know that. Also, we pick patients that have very good vision in their fellow eye. So when we do this procedure, and we know the vision is going to degrade initially when the cornea becomes swollen, um, that they have a, a, a good eye to depend on while the surgical eye is healing. Uh, also, so those patients have to have patients. And I think that's really important. Also, some contraindications are patients that have a history of uh, herpetic eye disease or CMV. Yeah, this is great, great stuff. I mean, it, it, it's, um, it's almost like cheating, you know, uh, that you know that you're, you're preparing to do a graft and, and then just saying, okay, well, <laughs> there's no graft. Um, it, the, 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 this is wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, it, it, it's a technique that has advanced, I mean, just so quickly, it, it, it's, it's incredible to see from the outside. Uh, yeah, you were, you wanted one, to one, on? one more thing. Please. We, we know that the decimase stripping technique that we use with DSO should be extremely gentle. So it's more of a peeling. It shouldn't be like the kind of the kind of scraping, you know, we you shouldn't don't want any do ridge that. There. We you don't, don't want step. any yeah. Stromal fibers liberated. So we want yeah. to have a very, very gentle, almost like a dysmetorexis, as as the you know people have coined that term as well. So really, just kind of getting an edge and just peeling it around like we do a capsulorexis, so that we don't have any you know kind of um, indentations into the stroma. Yeah, marvelous stuff. Marvelous stuff. Deepinder, I've, I've, I've enjoyed this conversation very, very much. This is, you know, all, well, first of all, talking to you on any subject is fun, uh, but this particularly, uh, and I know that you have enjoyed uh, this conversation as uh, well, and I know that that's why uh, immediately at the end of this video, you're going to go out and tell your friends <laughs> about iWorld Live. It's unbelievable uh, that this resource uh, is available at no cost, and you're being selfish by not telling them. Thank you for joining us. Deepinder, thank you for joining us too. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.